Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. My name is Jack Alatesh, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at buying ourselves our first updated ship, uh, as well as fitting out that ship and go over the general fitting system. Now, if you recall in the last video, what we did is we went out to a hazardous res here in the starting system, and we went and assisted the cops with blowing some folks up, made ourselves about 300 grand doing it. All right, so we're back in the station. We've lowered ourselves below the service into the hangar, so we'll go to starport services, and then we'll go to the shipyard. And the ship that we want to pick up is going to be the Core Dynamics Eagle. This is a fantastic little knife fighter of a ship. And uh, it does not have a high rebuy cost, which is probably one of the best reasons for picking it up very early in the game. So in this case, we're going to buy the new one. We'll sell the old one. We'll get 44,000 credits for it. Your mileage may vary on that. I made no modification to the ship prior to res or post resetting my save. Uh, so we'll see how, we'll see how, or I suppose you'll expect, you'll see how it comes out. All right, so now we find ourselves in the Viper. And in my case, I'm kind of adult and don't know how to use said external debug camera. So in this case, we'll just be looking at it more or less from the fitting viewpoint. All right, so now that we're in here, we'll go into outfitting. And there we are, our lovely green Viper. All right, so the first thing we're gonna take a look at is the core internal. These are the internal modules that are required on your ship. First is gonna be bulkheads. You'll see from the shop that they offer different bulkheads. What these do for you is they give you additional haul hit points. These are extremely handy if you're on a ship that you expect to get hit at all. Without these, your hull is roughly paper thin. So our integrity starting out is 72 hit points. With military grade composites, we spend 100 grand on them, but they're worth uh, an extra, what, 68 hit points, bringing our total to 140. However, seeing as we're still a very poor beginning pilot, we're going to forgo that. Next up is the reactor bay, power plant. All right. Now, something that I, well, actually, it's not showing up here, but anyhow, basically modules have sizes, and these sizes uh, determine how uh, powerful said module is, as well as how heavy it is. Every ship that you'll buy comes with Echo class modules, or in this case, it is a size 2 class E. The most important thing to do in any ship, if you're just dead freaking broke and trying to fit the thing, is to bump it to the D size module. Now, notice down there in the, in the, let me grab a marker here. Notice down here we have a series of ranges. These are going to be the jump ranges for the ship. We have the minimum, the current, and then the maximum. And the thing about the jumping between systems is the lighter your ship is, the more efficient your drive is. Not fuel efficient, mind you, but distance efficient. So, in this case, if we stick with our current power plant, our range is 8.4 light years. If we go with a 2D, it's 8.6. If we go all the way up to a 2A, it's 8.5. It doesn't make a ton of difference now, but once you lighten up all the modules by going to a 2D or better, uh, you will end up significantly ahead. All right, so we're going to go for a, two, a 2D power plant. The other thing to keep in mind is that when you sell modules, you always get their full money back out of them. So there's really nothing to lose in trying and experimenting with ship fits. There is also a nice web configurator called Coriolis.io. Uh, I'll put a link to that down in the video description. Uh, and actually, I'll put a link directly to the fitting we're doing on the Viper here in case you'd like to emulate it yourself. Now, as you might imagine, the power plant is the amount of power output that you have. And then the next thing we're going to look at is thrusters. The better the thrusters, generally the more maneuverable your ship is going to be, with the exception of C-class. Idiosyncrasies. All right, actually the exception of most of them. The Ds are more powerful than the, or excuse me, the 3Ds are more powerful than the 2Es, two, two which makes sense. Anyhow, we're going to be looking at the Ds. That'll increase our top speed to 244, our boost speed to 356, which is not fast, but it is respectable. And as you'll notice, we will end up with some more power power consumption. You can also, if you have lots of money, buy yourself A fitting modules, which are the best modules that you can possibly get uh, in terms of their performance, but not necessarily their weight. So we'll go ahead with buy and install some a set of 3D thrusters. The frame shift drive. This is where you stand to gain the most of your range. If we were to be able to upgrade this to an A-class module, we would end up with 19.4 light years for a jump, which is pretty respectable for a little fighter. However, in this case, we're just going to upgrade it to a D, take care of the weight savings without spending a whole bunch of money doing it. Life support is also an important thing. 
Now, as life support, you end up using some power to do it. However, it increases the amount of time that you have to get back to a station in the event that your canopy gets busted. And from experience, generally, I'll go with the C, even though, yeah, it can weigh a little bit more than the E does. Uh, actually, in this case, it weighs the same as the E does, but it provides us 10 whole minutes to get out of whatever situation we're in and get back to the station before we suffocate in the cockpit. Next up is the power distributor. Uh, the power distributor is extremely important as this determines how fast those capacitors recharge. So if you're building out for an energy weapon fit, you're going to want to have a bigger capacitor. In this case, we're going to build the sucker on multi-cannons because I like multi-cannons. Yeah, you have to buy ammo for them, but uh, really, I don't know, it, just chalk it up to an ease of fitment thing and the fact that I just kind of enjoy, this, enjoy the little things. So we'll buy a 2D power distributor. Once again, we'll pick up a little bit more range as far as the ship is concerned. Next up, we have sensors. This determines how far away you can see things and lock onto them. They do not have D-class sensors. However, they have C-class, and they're only 10 grand, so we'll go ahead and buy those. And then with the fuel tank, generally what's in it is the biggest for its particular module size. Next up, we're going to take a look at the hard points, the guns. This guy comes with a small pulse laser, two small pulse lasers, and an empty. Now, if you enjoy lasers, by all means, keep them. You don't need to worry about ammo, anything of that nature. Um, however, they're not necessarily the best way to go, in my opinion. And this station has no multi-cannons, which means we're going to be fitting some kind of lasers to this. Or regular old cannons. So you have beam lasers. A lot of folks very much enjoy beam lasers. Uh, in my case, I don't care for them quite as much. Uh, this is also a good time to point out uh, one of these ship fitting mechanics here, so to speak. All right, let's go back into beam lasers. All right, so there's a cool little icon on the screen that tells you what type of weapon that is. That is going to be right here. It's a little crosshair. That means the weapon is fixed to your chassis. It has no ability to gimbal itself. This one is turreted. That means that it has the ability to gimbal itself in pretty much wherever you can see a direction. Now looking over here, we have the other symbol, which is the one that I look for whenever I'm buying modules, and it's going to be the gimbling. I like gimbling because it means you don't have to be as accurate with things, because I'm a mediocre combat pilot at best. So I like the idea of an increased, I don't know, cone of entry, so to speak, or cone of engagement that I can employ with any given weapon. And let's see, what do we got? We've got mining lasers, no good. Missiles, lots of ammo cost. Torpedoes, mines, no thank you. Rail guns, a lot of folks like rail guns. My problem with them is they're only available and fixed. So, no thanks. You also have fragment cannons, and these would be probably one of the coolest weapons in the game if their ammo capacity wasn't so small and you have no ability to make yourself new ammo on the fly, as far as I'm aware. Could be wrong about that. If I am, I'll go ahead and correct it at a future time. So in this case, we're going to go for some gimbaled cannons, because why not? So we're going to go ahead and buy ourselves three of these 33,000 credit cannons. And that should finish pretty come pretty close to finishing our ship loadout. Oop, back in hard points, we're going to replace this guy with another cannon. Go for the one echo, gimbaled again. All right, and then our empty hard point, we'll go ahead and drop a third cannon on there. So right now we've spent, eh, what, roughly half of our earnings from what we got, maybe a little less, and we have a fairly reasonable ship. We're going to look over here at optional internals. So the optional internals are modules you do not have to have. As suicidal as it sounds, you don't have to have a shield generator. I would advise always having a shield generator. The reason being is because without one, it's just a really rough go of things. Since we have a little more cash to our, on our hands, eh, let's go ahead and let's bump it up to a 3C, and that should give us a little bit more in the way of shields. But wait, you can see from down there that our power is over 100. So the easiest way to get around that, go back in here to the power plant, and we're going to stub ourselves up to a 2C. A little more heat efficient, 11% more power. So when we buy it, we get the entire value of the two delta that we bought back, and then we only pay the difference between the two of them. Comes out pretty handy. We'll go back to optional internal again. So we got to have a cargo rack sitting in here. That's fine. 
So you can you set up cargo racks if you care to, etc. In this case, it's a size two slot. I'll go ahead and buy a size two cargo rack with a four ton capacity. That's why not. Might as well have it even if we don't necessarily intend to use it. There's also this basic discovery scanner. I would advise just simply getting rid of the thing. It takes up a spot, is not extremely useful, it will not make you a ton of credits, and it will not tell you any more information than what can be gotten by scanning a nav beacon in any system you haven't either explored or already bought the, bought the uh, cartography data for. Let's see what else we can jam in here from the station. So we can sell our body scanners, we can put, a, put the basic discovery back in, scanner back in, big deal. All right, so there's really nothing here for us for these other two compartments, which is fine. We'll leave them empty, a little bit lighter. If you have the Horizons expansion, you will see this planetary approach suite. This is what permits landing on planets. If you do not have, uh, or excuse me, if you do have Horizons, it'll be there. If you don't have Horizons, then it just simply won't be there. Nothing to worry about. And then if you happen to have, I don't know, gotten yourself a paint job, you can go ahead and apply it. You can also go and you can stick decals all over the place. Like if I want to put a skull on my ship, that can certainly be done. And there we go. Let's go ahead and remove that. Also, as you rank up, you can also put your rank insignias on there for your uh, for your different uh, core abilities, such as your combat rank, etc. In my case, because I'm a beta guy, I got the Crimson Eagle paint job. So I'll go ahead and slap that on there because I really don't care for the green. That looks much cooler. All right. So when you go back out after buying new weapons, it'll tell you, hey, set your fire groups, dummy. Reason being is because if you don't, you'll end up with a weapon that, for example, if I pull the trigger for fire group one, I will not be shooting all three of my cannons. Now I will be. While I'm thinking about it, there was something missing from there. So let's go back into outfitting here. We totally missed the utility mounts. This guy only has one utility mount, which is okay because we will only need one of them. The kill warrant scanner is probably one of the most important items that you're going to end up having aboard your ship. In this case, we can get away with the kill warrant scanner echo class for uh, just under a power budget. If we jump up, will be slightly over our power budget with it out, which means we can either set modules to turn off or we can uh, we can go buy a bigger power plant. Well, I'm greedy and I'm a capitalist, so I want the Delta and we'll just work out that module thing. All right, so it gives me the fire group warning again. We'll go over here and set it up so that the left trigger, number two, is my fire group. Also, we'll go over here into modules and we will tell this effectively what to turn off should we manage to run out of power. In this case, our cargo hatch consumes 7% of our power output of our, of our power thing, or excuse me, our power core. So that guy will get turned off whenever we deploy our hard points. And then let's see here, we could set up a turn life support off. That's probably not a great idea. But as you can see from the bottom section, once again, grab the marker. As you can see here, we have a little bit of wiggle room when the items in two are turned off. It draws us below that 100% threshold, meaning that Beyond that point, we should be good to go. Whenever you're doing fun power plant setup like this, it's always a good idea to go ahead and launch yourself. Get out into space. Make sure that when you put your hard, your, uh, hard points out, your whole ship doesn't power down. That can be extremely inconvenient if it happens at a bad time. One important thing to note about our cool little eagle build here is that even though it is a ship that's a step up from, from the abysmal sidewinder that we started out in, uh, it is still nowhere near a hardcore heavy ship, and there's a piece of ship floating around. Apparently some NPC got into a bad way with the station, the station got angry, and yeah, now it's parts. Anyhow, the ship does excel at maneuverability. It is extremely maneuverable, especially as you update your fit up closer to A-Class. But it is still not all that tough. So it's kind of an important thing to keep an eye on what you're doing and uh, not get yourself blown up in the process. At this point, we're being scanned by the police. The police are just going to scan us. If there's any uh, any warrants against us, anything of that nature, then obviously they will not be too happy. In this case, move along, Commander. We're done here because I haven't done anything bad. So now what we're going to do is deploy our hard points and see what shuts down. All righty. So we'll look down over here. We'll go back to our modules and we will see where we're at. All right. Ooh, 
no. Uh, okay, so we just got ourselves a fine for violating a no. All right, hundred credit fine for no for violating no fire zone. Probably not a great way to go. Anyhow, we're still out of power even with our frame shift drive and such turned off. So it just may be a better idea to go pack this sucker back into the station. I guess in the future I should be more careful with that. Alright, so we will go in here and buy ourselves a bigger power plant to support our, the massive power of our kill warrant scanner. Alternately, you can toggle things on and off. Uh, on and off as needed. Shouldn't necessarily be be much of a big deal in any which way. In my case, I've toggled the kill, the kill warrant scanner on and off in various ship fittings throughout time. Just because I'm being a cheapskate. Really, if we don't get scanned before we get in, we will have no problems at all. So even when we do, even if we do get scanned, it's very unlikely that anything happens because they're just a fine against us. So we get in here to landing pad four. We'll go ahead and pay said fine, buy a bigger power plant, and then try the whole thing all over again. All right. We'll toss our landing gear down. Limit our speed. All right. And there we are. Go ahead and set it down with great aplomb. Go ahead and touch E on the keyboard to scoot us back over, and it'll grab us. If I didn't have a shield, that would have caused some haul damage, but it didn't, so we're fairly well good to go. I'll turn off the track IR so I don't flail all over the place. And we'll go in here to contacts, and yeah, we can go ahead and pay off our fines. Confirm. Problem solved. No longer an issue. We can also restock for the whole 60 credits of ammunition we fired and refuel. And now we will go. That was not the right button. Go back in here into outfitting. And while you're being pulled down into outfitting, it'll tell you to stand by, etc. This is often not a bad time to check the mission board if you're inclined as to doing missions. Uh, we'll get to those probably in the next video, if not the one after that. Uh, when I've had time to go and get myself an even bigger ship. Reason being is because a lot of missions involve deliveries and this thing has no cargo space. Uh, in this case, the requirements are not met for this one um, because of the lack of cargo space. So the mission rank is penniless, which works out well with our trading or with our trading rank. Um, but yeah, we don't have six tons of cargo. It's kind of one of those things most folks figured, hey, space game, I'll jump in and just trade some stuff. And then they get met with the harsh reality of Elite Dangerous where if you don't have the space, well, you're not trading anything. It can make things very difficult to go through. So with this guy, three units of wine. Okay, we could do that, but that's 10 grand for a trip over to Aravate. No thanks, not worth it. All right, this one's not bad. Three tons of beer, 30 grand. Still not what we want to go after. There's skimmer destruction. But skimmer destruction may be illegal and it may cause additional fines. Okay, more trouble than it's worth. You can assassinate a target, get 60 grand out of it. He's harmless. We could probably take that one on without much of an issue. But we need an FSD interdictor and at the moment we're fighting with power budget. So probably not a great plan. Really what I would recommend for all players that are just starting out is to just simply go out to your local high res and sit there assisting the police and busting folks. Now, one of the things we're going to take a look at here in the next video is we'll take a look at the concept of going through and getting the spawn that it is that you'd like within the res. As I mentioned, there are different spawns there. There's a very easy way you can effectively roll the spawn over, so to speak, to get yourself a, uh, a better spawn, a more favorable, favorable one that will make you more cash in less time. So in this case, we're going to upgrade to a 2B power plant. We pay the difference between our old one and our new one, which is 35 grand. And now we're pretty well off to the races. We have power to run everything with the hard points out. And we'll just go ahead and leave the power settings the same way that they were. But I believe that's where we're going to end this video. Uh, the next one, we'll take a look at some other things that are around there. Maybe go back out to the res and play around with the whole instancing mechanic. But that's all for now. Thanks again for joining and look forward to seeing you again soon.